Do you sometimes find it difficult to make the right map for your game? Like are there times where you need clickable markers for quests or need a map that covers a large area? But when looking for a solution, all you can find is the same camera based approach. Set up an overhead camera that outputs to a render texture and attach an icon to each of your game objects. We've all done this at some point and you may have struggled to build more functionality around it. Let me give you a quick example by trying to click on our friend robot Kyle. To do that, we'll try ray casting from the map's overhead camera. And we can do that by converting a click position within the map's rectangle to the camera, then performing a ray cast. Testing this out, we'll see that since the icon is childed to Kyle, it also follows his rotation, which makes the icon a bit difficult to click on. We also don't have any pointer feedback and have little control of the image quality since the icon is being rendered in the scene. And we could mitigate this a bit and decouple Kyle from his icon and create a more complex ray casting system for pointer events, but let me show you a different approach. Instead of Kyle's icon being in the scene, let's move it to the interface instead. To do that, we'll need to remap the world position of Kyle to the map's rectangle in our interface. In other words, when Kyle moves around in the scene, we'll move an image of Kyle in our interface. We'll first section off an area in the scene with two game objects to define a play area. We'll then create a script called bounds and use the position of these two game objects to convert the world position of Kyle to a normalized vector too. In another script we'll call map, we'll reference our bounds and the transforms for both Kyle, the game object, and image. Within a function, we'll call the findNormalizedPosition function that's in our bound script. We'll then call the static function NormalizedToPoint in the rect class and pass the rect of our map and the normalized position. Finally, we'll call this function an update and apply its negative result to the anchor position of a canvas image. Back in Unity, we'll set the corners of the bound script and drop the map script onto the map's parent object. For the map itself, you'll see that I have the normal render texture, but I also have an additional image for Kyle's icon. Setting up our references, we'll first set the bounds, then drag in Kyle the game object and Kyle the icon. Testing this out, when I move Kyle around in the scene, you'll see that his position also updates on the map. And that's great and all, but the power of this is that we can now utilize Unity's pointer events for Kyle's icon. And you can see that here, where I added a simple image tint and an event to open an additional panel. And for this, you can also use Unity's built-in button component. Adding the script to Kyle's icon and testing it, you'll see that we now have some useful pointer feedback and clicking on the icon will now raise an event for any listening functionality, which I conveniently hooked up to a larger map to show not only Kyle's icon, but an additional static icon as well. For this larger map, all I needed was a new set of bounds to properly calculate Kyle's position. I also went ahead and used a static image for the map instead of a render texture, giving us more of a town or world map. And for these additional icons, we can either place them manually in our interface or have them be positioned by data held elsewhere. And there you go, hopefully you found part of this useful, Thank you for watching, feel free to like and subscribe for more videos like this, and I'll see you around.